Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Expert Burnout Tips with me, your host, Kate Donovan, also host of Fried the Burnout podcast. Today, we get to talk to my friend, Lauren Baptiste, who is enhancing today's work culture with a simple strategy, prioritize well-being as the hardest working professionals climb the corporate ladder. As a life coach and consultant on a mission to help women level up at work and at home, Lauren brings more than 13 years of experience in corporate culture and workplace burnout alongside her knowledge as a practitioner of Ayurveda, hormonal health, and other evidence-based modalities. This results in client shifting from exhausted and then it got cut off. <laughs> exhausted to empowered and Great. then from uh, overwhelmed to optimistic and from something to productive. So here I love are. it. Whatever it says. <laughs> I just noticed blind. it and then it cut off and I didn't notice I, before. <laughs> as you were reading it, I thought the same thing. I'm like, they're good. Uh, whatever. We're fine. People get it. They Fill know in what the we're blind. To say. Exhausted to your dream life. Let's go. <laughs> Love it. So this show has a very simple format. I ask beautiful burnout experts that I know and love to come on the show and tell me what their number one top tip is. So what is your number one top tip and who is it for? My top tip is to start somewhere and start small. Really, this can apply to all of us. My clients are working in environments where they are so busy that work is 100% of their day. And so when the idea of overcoming, recovering from, or even preventing burnout comes in, they're like, I don't have time for this. So the idea is, can we start somewhere? Can we start with something small? When a client comes to me and says they don't have 15 minutes to prioritize their well being, I just respond lovingly, then it must not be a priority for you at this time. And that's okay. I never force that. You'll know that when you need support. But here's what I'll say. Small wins like finding new motivation, more clarity, and ways to limit stress are just the beginning. In these little small things that we can do, momentum will start to build. And then once it builds, there's just no stopping it. Are there particular small things that you like starting with? Like, is there something that you typically find, you know, you know, at, over at Fried, we often start with pee when you got to pee as a mantra for take care of your basic foundational needs. Start there. Don't do anything else. Don't change anything, but drink when you're thirsty, pee when you got to pee, eat when you're hungry, when you can, we can't always control those things perfectly. But so I love starting in that place. Is there a, a start small, start somewhere place that you really just love? Yeah, some of the, the ones that I love the most are the ones you can already integrate in your day to day. Drinking that water. you don't need 15 minutes for. You don't need 15 minutes for drinking water, right? It's oh, it can always be right next to your desk when you're working all day long. You can refill this when you go to pee. So tagging on to Kate's, tag adding on to mine when you go pee, refill your water bottle and keep drinking water. So small, but it's so significant. When our body's dehydrated, it starts to go into a survival mode. It starts to impact brain function and impacts even our skin. If, if that's what it takes to get you to drink water, drink water. But every time when I have a client go from not drinking water to being hydrated, they're like, wow, I have more clarity. I have a little more energy. No surprise, but I love it. So that's one of the easiest, like start real small. If there's somebody out there that's like, ugh, I know that I'm supposed to drink water. Everybody always says that. I hate water. I hate water. Well, I get that a lot, actually. Okay. Yeah. Like, so what do we do when you hate water? But drinking water, I mean, it helps with focus. It helps with digestion. It helps with weight loss. It helps with energy. It helps with so many things. So, but you hate water. What do you do? You hate water. You have options. There are ways that you can doctor your water, right? Like the reality of like soda is water, but let's not go to soda, but we can add fruit to our water, lemon or lime, cucumber, all those like fruit infusions. I also in my tally of water and when I work with my clients, I say herbal teas are also allowable. It's when you start to go to coffee or uh, caffeinated teas that it starts to have that dehydrating effect, but there's always something. Depending on the person, 
I always put this with a little bit of a caveat. Seltzer is hydrating too, but the bubbles can actually create an anxiousness, an anxious effect. So there are certain times a year that we want to be more mindful of drinking seltzer or not, but I'll leave it at that, that if, if that's the only thing you're willing to drink, I'll take it. <laughs> so drink some water. Don't be too hard on yourself. Make it work as best you can. Absolutely. And if you are currently not drinking any water at all during the day, and we, uh, listen, I know you're out there. So if you're saying, well, everybody drinks some water. No, there are some people that do not drink any water at all during the day. You don't have to start with 64 ounces. Correct. Right. So we're back to this start somewhere, start small idea. Add in a cup. Mm -hmm. One less cup of coffee or one um, I want to say hydrated coffee, one caffeinated coffee to a decaf with a little bit more water shifting from espresso, which is like condensed coffee to like more of a Americano, right? Where there's just more. I'd rather water. drink an extra water than get rid of my espresso. <laughs> you do. It's like they're both, you drink them together and it ends up being an Americano. Let's be real. It's watered down. <laughs> right. It. So do the things that you can do that are within your capability and that feel easy. If it feels too difficult, you're not going to do it. You're not going to stick with it. You're not going to have what you said in the beginning, which I think is just so important. You're not going to have these small wins, which is not going to increase your motivation, which is not going to lead you to whatever the next step might be. Do you have one other really small thing that you love? I would honestly say the 2020 rule, right? I have, if you've heard of this and it's take 20 seconds to look 20 feet away for, I'm forgetting one of the 20s. I'm like 20 seconds, 20 feet away. <laughs> and 20... <laughs> I love it. I'm like, hold on. 20... Google it. I should Google it right now. Yeah, just Google All right, it. The 20, 20, 20 rule. Let's look. Okay. Yep. Every 20 minutes and repeat every 20 minutes. That's the one I always forget. So we can't just do that once a day and think we're going to be good. It's we take 20 seconds and look out our window 20 feet and do that every 20 minutes. And it helps us gain perspective. It's a moment of a break, right? We're always looking at our email. We're always not breathing. It gives us a moment to like recalibrate and come back to ourselves. So embrace that 20, 20, 20 rule. It's going to remind me to do it more than once today. I'm going to do it three times an hour. Who's with I you? love that because it's easy. It's easy to remember and it's easy to implement. And if you guys missed the episode with Michael Amster, where he talks about the power of awe, this is a good moment to go back and find that episode because finding awe within those 20 seconds is probably a good add on to this. Not right away. Do this first, add on later, one thing at a time, start somewhere, start small, but yes. This is a, it's a good add-on to this practice that I think could be super helpful. Lauren, do you think that these are, do you categorize these as prevention tips, as recovery tips, or both? Both. Both. Mm -hmm. I would. So if you're out there and you're worried about burning out or you're already burned out, you can use these tips. Any other last words for our lovely watchers. I was going to say listeners because I'm so used to saying that for the podcast, but watchers. Everybody. So there is an important catch with this start somewhere and start small, right? There's always a fine print. A lot of the hardest working individuals will push for all the growth in all the areas all at once. Here's the thing. Doing all the small steps and starting somewhere in this really big volcanic way doesn't work. I see that over and over and over again because we try to take it on and our brain doesn't know how to recalibrate it in a functioning way. And it has nothing to do with you or your brain. It's just there's a limit to what we can build on over a period of time. So what the thought is, is start somewhere, start small. Be true to that. Don't say, okay, well, I'm going to do the water thing and I'm going to do the coffee thing and I'm going to do the X, Y, Z, 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 right? And all of a sudden you're taking on too much, it all falls to the wayside after a week, and then you make no progress. And that's the difference when, when we're thinking about it, of how you can really shift from that overwhelm, frustration place to a place of feeling better, empowered, easy, and just good. Let's focus on feeling good. I love it.
All right, everybody out there, if you want more of what Lauren has to say, first of all, there will be a Fried the Burnout podcast episode coming up. But in the meantime, you can go to her website, which is listed right here below my face on the video. Lauren, thank you so much for hanging with me today. Thank you, Kate.